Hello, my name is Rachel Bell. I'm a consultant vascular surgeon from Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital, uh, and I'm speaking to you from the London Aortic Symposium 2018. The infection rate of uh, after endovascular aneurysm repair is about 0.5 to 4 percent for every implantable device. So it's not a common complication, but it is a devastating complication. The reason it's an it's an awful com com complication is because it's very difficult to treat. Um, patients present late because they have non-specific symptoms to start off with, um, and often the diagnosis is delayed until someone. Uh, twigs that they had a device put in and there's a potential that that could be infected. Um, it's the chronic sepsis uh, that is uh, most harmful to the patients um, and the problem is it, just like a prosthetic hip replacement or an artificial uh, valve in the heart, once it's infected it's very difficult to treat it without removing it. So you can treat it with long-term antibiotics and for certain organisms, if you know what the graft is infected with, there are some sensitive organs, organisms rather, so salmonella, uh, Q fever, we've had a few cases of those. You can quite confidently treat them with antibiotics alone because the microorganism is very sensitive to antibiotics uh, and you normally get a good response. The problem is that actually the vast majority of infections uh, are polymicrobial, so it involves many microbes, just not one. So it means quite a extensive antibiotic regime to get rid of the infection. And we all know that antibiotics are good, but have some very harmful side effects in the long term. So frequently that just isn't practical for the patients. Uh, we have found at Guy's and St Thomas's that the best way of treating this and curing it is to do a surgical explant and take the graft out and reconstruct the aorta either with in situ deep venous reconstruction or in situ bovine reconstruction. And the reason that that works, I think, is because you're taking away the huge bacterial load that's in the abdomen and you get all your samples so if you didn't know what organism it was beforehand you then do so that you can then treat with appropriate antibiotics. Um, there's no doubt that these operations are large operations. Um, they take all day, multiple surgeons, a great anaesthetist, lots of blood products but you know you will almost certainly get to a situation provided the patient survives where they're antibiotic free and cured. We also know that if you decide not to explant the graft, in the vast majority of patients, they'll be dead within 15 months to two years because of the chronic sepsis. So we have had a few patients who we have elected not to treat, uh, except with antibiotics, uh, and they've all died. However, you know, the, the surgical operation sounds big, uh, but there are versions of it that you can do that are lesser. So if you, instead of harvesting the deep veins, if you use bovine pericardium uh, to make your graft, it certainly shaves about two hours off the operation, which in some circumstances is a good thing. The other thing that you can consider, which is a less of a procedure, is instead of explanting the graft in total, opening up the abdomen and opening up the aneurysm sac and wrapping the graft with a mentum. So firstly, that allows you to get rid of all uh, the sort of debris and infected material within the aneurysm sac, wash it out. It also puts a mentum in close proximity with the prosthetic graft. A mentum is very good at walling off infection, but also allowing antibiotics to get closer to the graft. And so for some elderly patients, I've taken the uh, path of least resistance by doing that and deliberately not explanting their device or their uh, aortic graft. We've only done it in a few cases. They're fine. Um, I don't know what the long-term prognosis would be of that, but it was far less of a procedure than do, taking the whole thing out and reconstructing it. So I think it's a, it's a, a decision you make based on each individual patient and their fitness. 
um, if they're young enough and fit enough, take it all out and do the best reconstruction you can. But if they're frailer, consider not taking the de deep veins, use bovine pericardium, it'll shorten your operation. And if they really are frail, uh, then consider doing a laparotomy and wrapping the graft with the mentum because that's the least invasive or the least uh, surgically harmful operation you can do. Um, but I think all of those three options are preferable to antibiotics alone in the vast majority of patients, particularly if they've got an aorta enteric fistula, which is a connection with the bowel, um, because it's pretty much impossible to treat any in ongoing infection with antibiotics alone, because the uh, microorganisms that come out of the bowel and are so many so you've got fungal species you've got uh, e coli you've got enterobacter they require so many different antibiotics for you to treat a patient preferably at home with that variety of antibiotics is quite tricky we have a specialist interest in treating patients with infected grafts of all uh, uh, of all types, so thoracic, thoracoabdominal, abdominal, peripheral. Um, we have a multidisciplinary team that deals with that, so it's not just the surgeons. Uh, so there are two particular surgeons that are interested in it, and we always operate together because these operations are hardcore and you need a hand. Um, we have a, a couple of anaesthetists who gas for us because these cases are difficult because the patients are septic, they lose a lot of blood and you really need someone who knows what they're doing at the top end. Um, and we have an, a, a fantastic ID team, infectious diseases team and a particular consultant called Nick Price who's got an interest in it, aortic graft infection particularly, who was one of the people who set up the magic collaboration which is um, the management of aortic graft infection collaboration, uh, which is an online registry for these patients. And so there are people with a genuine interest in it. And I can't underline how important the team is. So in addition to that, we've got a big pre-assessment team, a POPs team that help us look after the patients post-operatively in an incredible critical care. So you need all of that infrastructure in order to be able to do this well. That's the first thing. So we've probably been doing this in reasonably high volumes for the last three to four years. We probably do about um, somewhere about 20 cases a year, which is a lot. So the vast majority of hospitals would be doing one or two. So this is a big practice. Um, we're sort of victims of our own success. We've run a few meetings. People know that this is what they do. So they tend to seek us out and send us the pictures or certainly ring and ask for advice about their own patients and then send them if need be. Um, we've had excellent results. So I presented some in the meeting earlier, but uh, the last, so last year's results were 16 consecutive patients. We had no mortality at 30 days, one death at 34 days, and a survival out to three years for some of the patients of 88%. So really good results. So we give six weeks of oral antibiotics and six weeks of IVs. So 12 weeks post-procedure, uh, all of the patients were antibiotic free with no sign of infection on PET imaging and their inflammatory markers were back down to normal, sort of running at five and seven. So from a you know normal life, that means the patients are not having multiple hospital visits, they're at home, they're getting better from their surgery, and the likelihood is that they won't need any further intervention. But we keep them under surveillance anyway.